नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू आर फाइव आर ऑनलाइन ट्रेनिंग ऑन डेवलपमिंग ई कॉन्टेंट फॉर टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स माय नेम इज तानवी खुराना एंड हियर वी आर दिस विद दिस ऑनलाइन ट्रेनिंग ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय सीआईईटी दैट इज सेंट्रल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एजुकेशनल टेक्नोलॉजी एन न्यू डेली so here we are going to discuss five topics on each day starting from today that is 21st of august till 25th of august and at the end of the last day that is 25th of august a quiz will be given to you so there's a lot to know about this training and all the topics that we are going to discuss we have uh, two experts in our studio for this particular day and our day one's topic is going to be e content for teaching and learning of mathematics mathematics the need scope and force force is free open source software so this is our topic for day 1 and uh, let me please introduce you to our experts for today we have with us dr ak vazalwar ma'am sir a very warm welcome to you thank you sir is a professor from the department of education in science and mathematics ncert and along with him we have uh, dr angel ratnabai s ma'am ve- welcome to our program namaskar namaskar ma'am is an assistant professor from central institute of educational technology ncert new delhi and uh, both the experts they are going to explain a lot of things regarding the e content for teaching and learning of mathematics so we have uh, an entire online training based on this topic we will be expecting your questions for sure please participate please register in this program and uh, you can register yourself if you have any questions any queries you can simply uh, email us the email id is training.helpdesk@ciet.nic.in at this moment you're watching us on evidya channel number 6 to channel number 12 and also on our youtube channel that is ncert official in the live chat box write down your questions your queries and uh, our experts they'll be more than happy to answer all your doubts towards the end of the program so till 5 o'clock uh, this program is going to be on and uh, we'll be definitely expecting your questions every uh, fourth week of the month we come with this uh, training on the e content on development of e content so um, let me please ask uh, or request uh, dr angel ratnabai to ma'am introduce the uh, training module for all our viewers because they are expecting a little more detail regarding the same ma'am thank you uh, uh, for uh, giving this time and once again i welcome all of you for this 5 hours training on uh, developing digital content for teaching and learning of mathematics as you are all aware this is a series on every fourth uh, week of the month that we are giving a training on developing digital content and today this particular week of uh, in the month of august we are going to specifically focusing on developing digital content for mathematics uh, we will be having five different sessions starting from knowing what and why of it and how to develop it and we will be concentrating on very specific free and open source tool so that you will be able to start practicing developing the content with that digital tool so we are going to to know more about this you need to visit the event page to visit the event page now you can simply go to the browser and just type ciet workshop so once you type cit workshop you get a list of things but you can see the very first one as workshops and trainings by cit when you click on this you will get the various programs which is being co- already covered and which is running currently and also the upcoming details so the current program is on developing on e content for teaching and learning mathematics the moment you click on it the event page will open which gives you the detail why this particular program what is the need and also gives the complete detail of the 5 days what we are going to cover on the during this program also it gives you the schedule with the resource persons detail who is going to take the session and once the session is over you will be able to see the video link here which will be updated on a daily basis you can register yourself using the registration link which is given here you sh- you are expected to register in this program so all of you are requested to register not just by only watching kindly register so that it will help us to communicate with you further and also once you register yourself you can watch all the 5 days program in the live session in the ncert 
official channel but by chance if you are not able to participate in the live program you can also watch all the sessions in our playlist the playlist link will be updated in this particular same page once the end of this particular uh, session today so you will be able to get the page uh, playlist at this place so that you it, you will be able to get all the five videos of this five hours training at one place where you can easily watch it and uh, as already informed there will be a uh, assessment based on this five hours that will be open on the last day of this training that is august 25th and it will be opening this is for all the participants to kindly note it will be just open for few days so it will be open only till september 4th so you need to please make a time uh, note, note a time note the time of closing because in the last month we have been getting lots of mails asking that i forgot the date i missed the date so we will not be able to help you if you miss the date so you are expected to kindly keep yourself updated with this date so that you can participate and also a very important announcement when you do this course the certificates will be issued through your mail but you need to wait for some time because more than lakhs of people are participating so we are issuing certificate in batches so do not mail immediately so at least for this particular program at least wait till 4th september till the course gets open that like from 4th september one month you need to wait so only after that you need to find out like if you are not getting the certificate then you need to write to us and that to only in one mail id training dot help desk dot at the rate cit dot nic dot in all details are given here kindly do not mail your queries to any other mail ids which will not be entertained or responded so kindly ensure that all your queries will be mailed only to this help desk mail id so that you will be able to go uh, receive the right response for your query so this is all about this training you can go through this the basic uh why we are doing this training is to really help everyone to understand develop your own digital resource for teaching and learning of mathematics this doesn't mean that only max teachers should participate in this program all other subject teachers also can participate because you are going to learn about some tool which can be used for your other subjects as well so this will be an introduction for you to go ahead when you are going to learn about the other subject so welcome be connected all the five days learn from this and try to develop your own resource thank you tanvi thank you thank you so much ma'am and uh, you passed on this important relevant information to approximately 3000 viewers who are at this moment uh, with us in this program so uh, let's begin uh, about this discussion before we begin this discussion i have an announcement regarding the india's g20 presidency we are extremely proud of the fact that india assumed g20 presidency and would convene the g20 leader summit for the first time in the country this year that is 2023 a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india's g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest its true spirit of vasudhaiv kutumbakam or should i say the world is one family vasudhaiv kutumbakam also translates to one earth one family one future and that is exactly the theme of this year's india's g20 presidency Now let's talk about uh, e-content for teaching and learning of mathematics. And uh, sir, there is a myth. There are a lot of myths regarding maths. Uh, one or two things I would like to say that uh, they say maths is not creative. They say that uh, maths is not uh, maths is all about logic and not intuition. So with this, can we say uh, that uh, maths is uh, um, there is no interesting way to make maths? uh no more creative or uh, did uh, technology play any part in making maths interesting what do you have to say about that thank you tanvi uh i would like to first of all good evening to all viewers uh you said math is not creative or it is dull or, yeah. i mean some some such mis uh, understandings uh, have been prevailing in our society for quite a long time uh mathematics is all about ideas logical thinking but we need to develop a taste for logical thinking that is more important if i really start thinking in that particular way i will develop a taste and i will go on doing that continuously 
but I need to be su supplied with some tools, I need to have some someone to guide me, some someone to facilitate those concepts so that I will be a, I will be in it, that in it is more important because still I am not thinking about it. I feel that there is nothing, there is just numbers, just dull figures of geometry, parallelogram, triangles, this and that and th there is nothing much beyond that. But it is not just merely the, uh, the, the content which is important, but it is the ideas that are important and ideas, they play a major role in our thinking. They, they, they bind us, they bind us in, into that particular subject area, be it Hindi, English, science or whatever area it is. Similarly, it is mathematics here. But the only thing is mathematics plays with ideas with the help of some symbols. And these understanding these symbols and appropriate use of these symbols, once I understand that, I will start playing with those ideas uh, very conveniently, very comfortably and then I will be able to uh, communicate. Uh, in that particular way. Today we are uh, going to discuss something about uh, the use of technology in uh, understanding of mathematics. See all over the world people are facing this particular problem which you said that students are not taking interest in uh, doing mathematics or getting involved in mathematical concepts. Right. And uh, that is why uh, when I, whenever I meet a student or a, or a parent and I say how is your ward doing, either the answer will be he is doing very good. And when I say, and when they say very good, they mean that he has scored good marks, 95 percent marks, 99 percent marks or 100 percent marks. Mm -hmm. So, we compare this very good and very bad or medium, all these things based on the marks, not on actual understanding or valuing the actual understanding of mathematical concepts, whether the child is able to apply these concepts around her whether the child is able to develop these concepts, whether she has, the, she has developed the capacity to create more concepts in mathematics, to link the concepts with the other subject areas, with the concepts in mathematics itself, all these things are very important. We do not value these things much. We simply talk about the marks that are uh, given by the teacher uh, on, the, on the notebook. Now, uh, people have been thinking about this from quite a long, uh, long time. In NCF 2005, there was a uh, major turn in this particular uh, in this particular area, uh, where we have given freedom to the students to think for themselves, to express their ideas, and teachers were called as facilitators. They 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 have been uh, given that particular uh, role of facilitating the things. But for doing this particular thing. Uh, mathematics laboratory or some concrete material is required. In the textbook, we have got some material. In the textbook, we have got the diagrams. We need to interpret the diagrams properly and we are bound by certain restrictions while reading a textbook or a printed material. How to get out of that particular uh, mindset of merely seeing those diagrams in one particular way, in one particular dimension only and how to, how to get out of that is very important. To a certain extent, the, the concrete material that was presented played a very important role and so mathematics laboratory played a very important role, but it has to be used in that particular way. The teacher has to understand how to use those models and how to present it to the students, how to get the students involved in the mathematical concepts. Merely showing them a cylinder and a sphere is not enough. We have to talk more about it and get the let the students talk about it more. Let, let, let us get the ideas from the students, what they observe around them, that is more important. And based on this only, a step further with the explosion of ideas in technology, we are trying to make use of this technology to, to show them the things that they cannot think about, the things that they can play with using their ideas. And so, this technology makes a very important, plays a very important role in developing the concepts of mathematics. Now, mathematics requires abstraction. We know that mathematics is abstract in nature. It plays merely with principles, but when playing with principles, it has to come from concrete ideas because it has not come from the sky. The human beings have developed it and looking at the uh, things around them, they have tried to formulate things and they have tried to generate some principles uh, related to mathematics. So, it is a discipline in which the learners learn to generalize, formulate and prove statements based on logic that is more important. In learning to abstract, children would need concrete material that has been done earlier. Now, we are moving towards technology. 
for visualization visualization is very important because if you simply say if you, if you simply show me a triangle in a particular way i will just think about it in that way only there are no variations in that particular triangle it could be upside down it could be uh, the the vertex could be towards the right the vertex could be towards the left or it could be downwards or slanting and different positions of the triangle and whenever i it comes to my mind a triangle uh, it is in a particular uh, uh, it is in a particular format only this technology will help us to do away with such ideas children are expected to verify principles or patterns patterns form a very important role it plays a very important role in mathematics based on patterns we try to generalize them and then we try to formulate them and then we try to get some theorems or some principles based on that so we, they try to generalize they try to find patterns and they try to find exceptions to the patterns as well so all these things the child will be interested in when technology comes into play and make generalizations so in different situations the child is uh, re uh, required to do that over the last two decades technology has changed the way world works in uh, in different spheres of our life we see that technology has done a lot of change in in our society in uh, in different countries but we want to uh, we want to utilize this particular technology for the betterment of mathematical understanding if i just now i said that if a student scores 100% mark doesn't mean that she has got good understanding of mathematics understanding of mathematics is important and that particular understanding can be done only when we use different tools like the the concrete material the textbooks the print material as well as the technology in use and that is how the the development of understanding will happen effective use of technology can enhance student learning by developing understanding stimulating interest and increasing student proficiency in mathematics in addition strategic use of technology promotes equity by allowing greater access to mathematics by all students to in a classroom suppose there are 40 students or 50 students and whatever stu number of students they are going in a particular uh, city in different schools so you have got limited number of students there they will be uh, they will be having access to the textbooks they will be having access to the instruction by the teachers but there are many students left out who won't get this facility of either getting the textbooks or getting a good teacher who will really inculcate the culture of mathematics understanding among the students and technology can help do that today also when we are interacting with uh, with you lots of lot of uh, uh, people have joined here they are able to hear you uh, hear us from this particular studio and whatever things are being deliberated here you can also actively participate in that and we can have a very good discussion on the different topics that are going on be it physics chemistry mathematics biology or whatever social science subjects are there so we, lot of uh, greater access is there due to the technology there uh, technology promotes equity that is what i am saying everyone can do that it is not just that boys can do it or males can do it and females can do it it is not it is not like that in fact girls can do it in a better way when they are exposed to such kind of tools and that that particular kind of pedagogy that the teacher will be employing due to the rapid improvement of technology the world is changing more quickly than ever before so the future is even more uncertain now that this particular generation of children right from 1980 to 2000 and beyond that they are in the technologically savvy generational groups they are very much fond of technology they can use technology in a better way than the adults can do and in fact they are very much close to the technology you can see the use of mobile phones or the use of laptops how quickly the children get familiar with those tools those buttons and are able to operate on them so as a result it is important to equip students with only not only academic content knowledge but also with general skills that will enable students to face any situation with confidence it is no longer enough for students to be proficient in mathematics it is not just necessary that the students if they are good in mathematics they are able to do mathematics they are able to read mathematics that is not just simply uh, uh, desirable but in order to extend the ideas further they need something more and this can be provided by the technological tools that are that have been developed but the children should get access to those technological tools so that they will have brighter ideas 
better understanding of the concepts that they do and they can come out of that particular monotony of the uh, of reading the textbooks simply or monotony of merely playing with the solid objects that they have been doing. So, this is a very good supplement technology is a very good supplement for understanding the concepts in mathematics. Information and communication technology that is what uh, that is we call it ICT literacy media and internet literacy data interpretation these are the demands of 21st century they are all 21st century skills and students are required to be proficient in these 21st century skills so that they will be able to uh, carry on the things further for themselves. Now there are technology tools there are two types of technological tools they one is content specific tools and the other is the content neutral tools content specific tools include the hardware and software such as calculators which we you normally most most of us use computer algorithm systems algebra systems dynamic and interactive geometry softwares like geogebra and all that app, different applets and spreadsheets learners can use these tools for computation construction and representation as they explore problems in mathematics these three things are very important you need to construct figures you need to construct suppose triangles or you need to construct angles you need to construct parallelograms and there are definite uh, rules behind them how these rules have come how these rules have evolved there is a interlinking of ideas the students learn to bisect an angle in class 6 <coughs> where they are making arcs and then they are trying to bisect the angle but why these arcs are made what is the significance of these arcs is there any mathematical base for that is there any logical base for that they study in whatever concepts they study in class 9 that time they are able to realize how, how and what role do, do these arcs play do these arcs play in the construction of the bisector of an angle similarly the creation of the 60 degree angle 30 degree angle or 90 degree angle and so on and so forth so there are certain rules behind that and there are certain principles behind that if a class 9 or 10 student has, a, has understood those con concepts he or she should be able to relate to these concepts and technology helps us to do that the visual thing is before them the better buttons are before them the only thing that is that provokes that invokes their uh, uh, that their mind is the ideas behind them the principles that they get involved in that and they are able to link those concepts to the already led read concepts in the lower classes the other type of tool is content neutral tools which include the communication and collaboration tools web based digital media presentation software hardware such as interactive whiteboards the smart boards that we call them it is a very important thing the moment you write something on it you are able to rub it you are able to th the moment you think that something has gone wrong or some step has gone wrong or some some idea has come to your mind immediately you can explore those ideas on that board and try to communicate it to your peers or to the teachers so that the effective communication goes on between the listeners and the presenters and when there is an effective communication there is a good flow of ideas among them there is a good understanding of mathematics newer and newer concepts uh, uh, grow and the students really get interested and somewhere you can address that particular problem of thinking that the subject is very dull that there is there are the ideas are very dull so on and so forth so mathematics as I from my uh, discussion till now you, um, you might have gathered that mathematics is a subject of exploration. It is not merely a thing that I should read. I should read a theorem or I should read an algorithm or something like that. I should be able to explore that particular algorithm. What is my need at that moment? What are the tools, mathematical tools available with me and how to explore these mathematical tools? For example, from shifting from simple interest to compound interest. The direct formula is given for amount A is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 whole, whole power N. How this formula has, has been developed? What are, what are the things behind that? Or if suppose I say 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and so on up to 2N minus 1 is nothing but N square. How this formula has come? How the formula for arithmetic sum of our, uh, N terms of an arithmetic progression has come? We, we should not simply accept that. But the students if they are explore, if, if they are made to explore how these things have developed it requires some you can say inductive approach 
first they will do for 1 plus 3 then they will do for 1 plus 3 plus 5 then 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and so on and then try to use some logic and try to establish that particular principle. So, that exploration part is important and technology helps you to do that particular thing. So, the mathematics classroom should not expect a blind application of ununderstood algorithm and that is why the formulae the different algorithms they they find it dull I have to just wrote memorize them just reproduce them on the paper if I am not able to uh, understand how these are developed then I won't be able to understand how the other formulae are developed and so on and so forth. The symbol of addition that the students use in primary classes 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 that same symbol goes in higher mathematics also with the same type of analogy but the mathematical objects are different the way they are being displayed that is different when I say f plus g whole over x for functions the same addition thing goes there and I say that it is f of x plus g of x similarly for product of functions the thing is same but the mathematical objects are different and so there are a corresponding little changes in that particular situation where we say that product of two functions addition of two functions and so on addition of two matrices addition of uh, multiplication of two matrices the same words are used but the analogy is same the idea is same that we use in the lower classes for numbers so from numbers these are the mathematical objects from numbers we are shifting to matrices to functions and so on for generating proofs in geometry the figures constructed are also models of the ideal dimensionless figure as per euclid when you say point point is a dimensionless entity and when point is a dimensionless entity how can a line exist because it has got it is a breadthless length simply so but to represent these things but to understand for our understanding we put a dot there and then try to describe things we draw figures there we draw a figure of a line we draw a uh, diagram of a triangle we draw a diagram of a rhombus and so on and then try to think about it means our exploration is provoked when we try when we have a figure before us when we have some model before us these are nothing but models now there are these are the models printed on the notebook or printed in the textbook these could be uh, this could be seen on the technological screen also your computer screen also and so in the on the computer screen you have the flexibility to move these diagrams as you want them to in different directions because while reading a textbook you might get a question why this particular parallelogram is drawn in this particular way only can it can a not can a parallelogram not be in a in a vertical mode like this or can a can a triangle not be an inverted one where the uh, baseline is uh, up and the vertex is downwards what will happen in that particular case will these principles will also hold there you can check it on the dynamic softwares which dr angel will talk to you today or in the next sessions uh, later on so these technological tools help you for to visualize the things and visualize while visualizing these things you will get good ideas about that particular subject and hence development of good understanding of the mathematical concepts but there is also an important aspect there is an interlinking of concepts the the the, the moment you try to do these particular things you try to you are uh, uh, at the back of your mind you are trying to link different concepts together which you are not even aware of at that particular moment so uh, helping children to develop that particular thing helping children to develop the ability to construct appropriate models by breaking up the problems and evolving their own strategies problems can be solved only when you try to break them try to see every part of that in isolation first try to understand that and then try to put them together like a jigsaw puzzle and then you get uh, you really understand how that problem can be solved so problem solving uh, is a very important part there it has the mathematics has to be close to the experiences and environment of the child it cannot go beyond that because we, i might start thinking that it has come something from the heavens which i don't know <laughs> the symbols that i see there the symbols of integration differentiation and the, uh, and se several different uh, symbols that i see why the, these symbols are there in fact when i really start understanding mathematics i will find that these symbols are created for our own understanding in itself i can express one particular idea on one page but the same idea i can express using these symbols in five lines only 
and that is the power of mathematics that is the power of symbols and once I start taking interest in doing that I will really get interested in doing mathematics and I will really get interested in playing with the concepts of mathematics. So, learning to abstract abstraction as I said if I do it for 1 plus 2 plus 3 I can do it for 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and then I can do it for 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 1000 and then I can develop the formula for that. So, when I am trying to abstract when I am trying to have numbers that are beyond my scope beyond the screen beyond in fact beyond the uh, uh, textbook page which I am not able to imagine in fact I will try to develop a formula for that and that particular thing is important developing a formula formulating generalizing and this generalizing is very important and when I say I am taking sum of n terms of a of an arithmetic progression n into n plus 1 by 2 you put any number there you take 1 lakh you take 2 lakh you take thousand whatever number you want to take you will quickly get the answer and this particular thing is more possible and visual is able to we are able to visualize that on the technological tool. The national education policy 2020 suggests the introduction of a new curricular area of computational thinking along with uh, mathematics education right from the early ages. Computational thinking is another uh, new area that is shortly going to be introduced and this particular thing requires the use of computers and of course, in the initial stages uh, we might require simply computers and other things, but the technological tools that Angel will ex explain us uh, will, will more helpful in doing that. As I said, a problem has to be broken into smaller parts and these smaller parts have to be understood first and then try to generalize these you have to see a pattern in these things and then try to find a generalization for that that is in short the uh, what I call the uh, steps for uh, computational thinking and the major steps for computational thinking will involve as I said decomposing into ingredients that is breaking the problems into smaller parts recognizing the pattern finding out of the similarities or shared patterns identifying the key components the important uh, area uh, ones and generating the rule for that. For example, the same example I will quote if I want to find the sum of numbers from 1 to 100 what I see there 1 plus 2 plus 3 or let me take a small number I want to find the sum of uh, say 10 numbers 10 consecutive numbers starting from 1. So, 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 10 what I see there 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. I mean what I am doing here I am adding the first two numbers then I am adding the third number to it then I am adding the fourth number to it so on and so forth. Finally, I got I get the total of 55 there. The same thing if I do it in a different way I take 1 and 10 sum is 11 2 and 9 sum is 11 3 and 8 sum is 11 every time I find this particular thing and I can do it in the reverse way also 10 plus 1 9 plus 2 and so on. So, there are 10 different ways before me. Now, abstraction how do we reach the, reach the step of abstraction? I will see the similarities. I will see that each of these pairs taken in this particular way the first and the last, the second and the second last, so and so on and so forth they totally add up to 11. And how many times I am doing it? I am doing it effectively 5 times 10 by 2 because I am getting the same total there 10 plus 1 is same as 1 plus 10. So, therefore, I can say that I am doing it how many times I am doing it 5 times and each time and I am getting the same answer 11 and this answer 11 is repeated 5 times. So, I am getting the total answer as 55. So, I am generating a formula for that while recognizing the pattern first I break it up then I recognize the pattern then I try to rearrange it and then I try to generalize it this particular thing happens in computational thinking I am I have given a very small example of this there could be different instances and more complicated problems which could be broken up seen in this particular light and uh, done on the computers using the different technological tools there. So, that is an important similarly coding also a little idea of coding we have given in uh, in class 8 mathematics in fact the whole whole of mathematics itself is a code but uh, the uh, small idea has been given in class 8 mathematics in the last chapter uh, of uh, number system so that particular idea of coding is also going to be there and uh, from the initial classes itself uh, we will be trying to introduce these uh, these things so that students mindset get attuned to 
what kind of uh, how to generate algorithms and how to link the different ideas in mathematics how to link ideas of mathematics with physics and more importantly the moment i start linking ideas and thinking about mathematical concepts my uh, my mind runs in different subject areas as well i can do it in hindi i can do it in geography i can do it in science i can do it in uh, ma uh, chemistry and so on how those ideas evolve how those ideas are related to different areas and i am really getting interested in doing that so no longer the mathematical symbols and the concepts will become uh, will appear dry and drudge uh, drudgery to me the approach to integrate digital literacy in the early years of mathematics should be to use ict as teachers aid to explain the application or provide the visual concept of abstract concepts for example converging lines decimals mixed fractions how are mixed fractions can be seen for example when i say 1 by 3 is a fraction fine because one is a part of the three parts the whole a part of a whole that we could say a fraction but how can 11 by 3 a fraction 11 the numerator is greater than the denominator how do you say that it's a fraction so when i try to depict this in different geogebra applets or some other technological tool i will be able to see that yes there is a fractional part involved that all in that also and that is why we call it as a fraction as well so similarly decimals it's a particular type of fraction because the denominator in the decimal when i say 0.1 it is nothing but 1 by 10 but every time in the denominator i am getting a power of 10 i it is definitely different from 2 by 7 it's it's the the denominator is not a power of 10 there but it's a particular class of fractions that has the powers of 10 and that we call as decimal and that representation is you are familiar with so these things can be seen through visualization <coughs> on the different technological tools that can be uh, seen and so the practical application aspect is very important the use of technology promotes inquiry when i'm trying to explore the things and i'm trying to develop some diagram or i'm trying to develop some uh, uh, concept uh, using the technology i i i i'm led to i'm many times perplexed how to how should i do it so what are the things that are involved there let me go back to the same example so when i say that i have drawn, drawn some arcs there what do these arcs look like when i extend these arcs i find that they are circles and when they are when i say that they are circles what properties of circles are there which i study in class 9 and 10 that help me to bisect that particular uh, angle and so technological tools are very important visualization is very important when i say limit uh, uh, extending to 1 1 upon say uh, x minus 1 and that particular thing when i try to draw uh, when i draw it on the uh, using the geogebra or desmos calculator and then i magnify it further by giving different values when i magnify it i i really i'm really astonished to see that yes it it is not leading to anything so 1 by infinity uh, i'm I, i'm leading to 1 by 1 by 0 that is infinity and how it is happening similar the curve x cube y equal to x cube how that curve is going what are, what is, at what point it is intersecting that x axis so on and so forth so concepts that are there um, in the in mathematics that need okay uh, the theoretical part is fine i'm i'm okay with that i mean the student is okay with that but many times such things happen whether it is just an imagination so that particular thing is taken care of when i actually see it on the screen and try to see yes this particular thing is happening so whatever concepts are there be it some of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees or how to construct a parallelogram only there are only four or five requirements for that i can have different ways of constructing the figure using the uh, using the tools uh, in the technology that are provided and see for myself how dynamic it is and if it is not possible i won't be able to do that whatever the be the condition so that that culture of inquiry develops in my mind and then i constantly inquire i try to find solutions for that i try to and inevitably then i am trying to link the things with the previously read things uh, in the earlier classes so the use of technology pr uh, promotes inquiry and contributes to mathematical reflection problem identification and decision making 
The use of technology of course cannot replace teachers because whatever face to face discussion happens between a teacher and a student that is very important and of course it is expected that the whole class participates in that discussion. A student raises a question, another student tries to answer to it and then there, there is a cross questioning there and there are arguments there. These arguments help to deepen our understanding of mathematical concepts that is very important. But of course, teachers need to be decision makers in determining when and how their students can use technology most effectively at what point of time where the theoretical things are required ok. But these theoretical things require some practical application require some visualization and for that technology is used and at that point of time teachers can take appropriate decision. Technology provides an opportunity for teachers to rethink fundamental pedagogical issues in teaching and learning of mathematics because whatever things have been learned by the teachers themselves they might have happened in a rote way and that particular thing the technological tools will help them to come out of those rote ways of thinking. They themselves will start thinking about whatever they have learned throughout their school years and teaching years, uh, teaching experience and try to come out of it. It is, it is a, our thinking has to be dynamic. Today whatever I think is appropriate may not be appropriate in another concept. So, that particular thing we should be, we should be, uh, we should be uh, uh, what, yeah, what I say uh, uh, prepared to accept the change and that change is very important and uh, technology will help us in doing that particular thing. Teaching is being viewed as a process of facilitating students learning and that is what uh, earlier NCF had also said that teachers were uh, called the facilitators. You provide them the tools, you provide them the situations and ask them to discuss among themselves and try to find out and explore the things for them. So, teachers are the facilitators and then they will try to endorse the things that the students are doing. They will try to further uh, 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 take the discussion further in different situations. And though every teacher has her own style, still comprehensive technology exposures along with how to design digital content resources with pedagogical approaches need to be worked upon. There is a need to integrate technology use in mathematics curriculum at school stage in India so that learners can as access a better way of learning while connecting to and visualizing other concepts. That is very important and as I said earlier how different concepts are related to each other that is more important and for that purpose appropriate professional development uh, has to be provided to the teachers so that they are um, fruitfully able to deliver their, uh, their role as a facilitator to the students and the technology that will come into, into the classroom along with the pedagogical tools <laughs> will definitely enhance the understanding of uh, students. So, software applications are resources and it is more important to think about the nature of the users experiences. So, use of software can be invoked in two distinct ways. Sometimes it is appropriate to give the users a ready made document or many times it is appropriate to make them that particular document. While creating something you get the joy of doing things and if you are given something but then in that case also he, the students are required to analyze what is being done in both, both the ways of doing things are important and I hope Tanvi my time is not exceeding. No sir. Uh, uh, these are the uh, some of the repository for digital resources for mathematics e partshala which Dr. Angel will be able to tell you better and uh, digital infrastructure that is Diksha program then uh, Swayam, MOOCs, Swayam Prabha a group of 32 DTH channels and these are different links that are provided uh, before you. Uh, many of you might be aware of it, but uh, it is important to um, see how we can make fruitful use of these digital resources in our classroom and for our students. Okay. So, let me ask ma'am here that yeah. uh, ma'am these are the portals we can see sir has announced the name. So, are there any resources that these portals have for our viewers? Yeah, these are the, uh, as sir said like we can use digital uh, technology yes. for in two ways. One is like by giving a ready made resource. So, all these platforms which are listed like e gives all the content developed by NCRT mm -hmm. and Diksha platform 
platform it has lot of digital resources developed by not only ncrt by by other states and uts and all the school boards so it's all available there very specifically mapped to your mathematics textbooks chapter wise so you have ready made resources which are available in terms of videos audios in terms of interactive resources also if you see like there are uh, these the platforms like swayam has online courses very specific to mathematics like ncrt itself is running three courses on the platform for class 11 and 12 so there are very specific courses available so but if you see all this even there are some links which we have given there for virtual labs so these virtual labs are available with ready made applets already available which a person can easily use it and just use for as sir as very like clearly said technology can help in exploration it can help in visualization it can help us for generalizations and also to have an experiential learning so for all this the resources are available but the other way to use is is to create the the teachers can create their own content to use it in the classroom or even the teacher can use these tools to give it to the students for creating to learn as well as to assess so there are multiple ways you can use so on the screen now we can see some of the digital tools that can be used by a teacher for really creating their own content so some of the softwares are listed here on the screen you can see that uh, so one of the tool which sir was already mentioning is geogebra most of the max teachers are aware of this name there are other tools also it's not that every tool will be sufficient one tool is sufficient for everything mm -hmm. so we may need also need to choose the digital tool as uh, already sir has said very clearly it's a content specific tool so when you see geogebra it can be used for geometry as well as for algebra it's like it can be used but if you wanted to have a construction geometry like you want to know how to construct a uh, thing like in the way you usually do in the practical geometry in our textbooks like you not know, cut an arc so you want to do with the compass you want to take a scale measure it so when you want to teach practical geometry there is a specific tool called Rom robo compass similarly if you see you wanted to teach students of a lower level like like class level 6 7 8 you wanted to keep teaching about like fractions and you want to keep about like the area you want to teach about like the numbers like you no know, sum of it mm -hmm. so usually we use geo geo board that's a physical board which we use it in our classroom mm -hmm. it's part of the max lab kit usually it is there but we also have online geo geo board so mm -hmm. which can be utilized for a particular top so like that if you see km plot it's more of like graph you give a number and then plot it you give a expression plot it you give an uh, equation plot it so when you wanted to plot and see how it works then you need to choose a tool like which is km plot like like this it's a, just an examples i have put here hmm. to just say that there are content specific tools okay these are all softwares this can be installed in your system for free there are these are the all whatever we have said is all a free software there are some softwares which are also open and free we call it as free and open source so for example we call like when we call it as free and open source even you can change its source code according to your need okay. there are teachers who have been customizing the software according to their need so there is a scope that we always say depending on your context you customize things so here there are digital tools available that can be customized as per our requirement so that is where we always recommend to use more of free tools which are available so though those which is affordable for teachers you don't need to spend it many times what happens is when we want to use technology the question comes is it affordable whether mm. students can purchase it yeah. whether you choose students can use it but this these are tools which are available for free which any student can easily download use it for themselves so there are sufficient tools available for us to start using for creating our own e content for teaching and learning of mathematics so it's not very tough it is very quick and easy also for us if we know the benefit so till now we have been discussing why it is required for us to mm. use technology in teaching mathematics but it also it's important to know what are the pedagogical implications of using sir will be able to throw some light on it like what are the different pedagogical implications on uh, using technology in teaching of mathematics so quickly we can uh, run through that so that we have an understanding of it 
when we get into deeply uh, knowing digital tools from tomorrow onwards we will be knowing how to use very specific tools in developing content right yes sir so we don't have much time left but uh, would you yes, quickly talk yeah, about I'll it yeah i just quickly talk about yes. this pedagogical implications for example when we are i'm just quoting an example of geogebra hmm. and when we are interacting uh, uh, directly or indirectly with geometric figures they have constructed this interaction occurs in a continuous and dynamic way by means of the direct control of one's hand you have got mouse with you in your hand and you are just trying to uh, sketch the figures different figures now how this is being done we automatically comes to your mind for us the most striking and powerful impact comes when in pursuit of a mathematical question or goal students directly explore a geometric realm where interacting with their hands eyes are focused and eyes and focused minds that is more important the mind is focused on the way they are trying to do it and one of the issues is a uh, very important uh, the sense of surprise and wonder that animating mathematical diagrams and images can bring the, that sense of uh, wonder is very important and uh, uh, the other important thing which i wanted to bring is uh, the we must confront the decision of offering users as i as you said earlier also pre constructed files or to or make uh, uh, or to allow them to make their own files so that particular decision can be taken by the teacher uh, at that particular uh, uh, point of time and uh, finally i would say that icts are used in education in two for example when i am constructing a figure like uh, i want to i want to see how many numbers are there between 2 and 3 on a, in a textbook i have a very restricted domain i i i, I can i can't show it for more than half a page but when i am trying to interact on geogebra software what i do is i try to magnify it continuously between 2 and 3 i have got 2.1 2.2 up to 2.9 then between 2 and 2.1 again there are 10 numbers between 2.1 and 2.2 there are again 10 numbers and that way i can go on magnifying it and see for myself how many numbers could be there and this particular concept is useful in learning of uh, concept of limit when i say x tends to 0 what does it mean x tends to 0 that particular thing comes when you actually try to construct the diagram and try to see how, when x uh, in a particular number moves towards 0 how many numbers it is going to cross and there are it, it will be surprising for them to see that there are infinite numbers they they have to cross and that is why that concept of x not equal, we are not writing x equal to 0 we are writing x tends to 0 and the significance of that particular symbol comes to my mind when i am trying to explore that particular concept there using the uh, uh, the that particular thing so to bring the change effort has to bring to empower teacher to develop an inquiry based culture a community of explorers where curiosity creativity and questioning are uh, valued and where resources and opportunities are made readily available and students can work like scientists as if they are themselves mathematicians and then they are trying to create the concepts of mathematics so a variety of changes must be implemented to optimize teacher use of I icts and that is why the shifting of pedagogy is is very important so today is the age of uh, technology explosion lots of new technologies are coming the size of the uh, uh, the uh, tools of uh, the the mobile phones or the laptop they are decreasing and they are getting more and more handy and students uh, in fact many of our soft sort of things that have been developed in ncert have been uh, uploaded in the uh, uh, the uh, uh, thing tools such that they are available on laptop or they are available on the mobile phones in fact while going or while traveling i can use those things so it is very important that students are exposed to these kind of technological tools so that they are able to understand the concepts of mathematics in a better way that is all for from my side thank you thank you so much sir uh, for letting all our viewers know that why is uh, developing e content so important for the teaching and learning of mathematics thank you so much ma'am we have received a lot of suggestions some questions as well uh, i have noted it down maybe we can take it in our tomorrow's program yes we will yes. check those questions and try to address in the coming session absolutely one of the questions was that would you like to explain these tools in a little better manner so i would i can uh, tell that uh, in the upcoming four sessions you will get to know these tools in a much better and detailed manner so please watch those programs thank you so much ma'am and sir for being with thank us you. today thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much.
Thank you to all the viewers for being a part of this program. I really hope that you have registered yourself. And if you have not registered yourself, please do that. Uh, we have four more sessions till 25th of August. We are going to come here and uh, different topics will be taken. Let me tell you that tomorrow at uh, sharp 4 o'clock, we'll come back and we'll discuss the topic GeoGebra features and possibilities. So a tool is going to be uh, discussed and uh, in the most detailed manner, its features, its possibilities each and everything will be discussed by an expert. Please raise your questions and uh, sharp 4 o'clock we will come back here on the same platform which is NCERT official that is our YouTube channel and we will be expecting your questions for sure. At this moment we are wrapping up our day one of this online training and uh, the upcoming program is also a very special program called Sayog, Guidance for Mental Wellbeing of the Children and the topic of discussion is going to be coping with failure or failure as a learning experience. Experience. With that, I am wrapping up this program and uh, one more information, important information is for all of you. If you have not purchased the NCRT textbooks till now, please purchase them. Either you can uh, go to the sales counter directly from 9.30 to 6 p.m. You can go there and buy those books or you can simply download the PDF versions from NCRT, Deeksha or uh, ePartshala website or their mobile application. And the third method is you can simply place an order with the help of the website that is ncrtbooks.ncrt.gov.in. So, I really hope that you are going to buy these books really, really soon. I am Tanvi Khurana. I will take a leave of you. Have a great day ahead. Namaskar.